gale force winds are approaching. Dark clouds are brewing up into a storm. Thunderstorms occur when a warm air mass clashes with a cold front. Huge amounts of energy are generated and discharged in the form of lightning. Sometimes hail is also formed in thunder clouds. Rock hard icy stones which strike the earth like shots raining down from a height of up to 16 kilometers. Hailstones with a diameter of 15 centimeters have been found. 150 thunderstorms discharge their hailstones around the world every minute of every day. The destruction caused to houses and cars is sometimes devastating. Damage running into billions of US dollars is caused by hail every year around the globe. Meteorologists at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado are studying how hailstorms begin and how more precise and longer term forecasts can be provided. Forecasting hail is really the same as forecasting severe storms. So you look for forecasting instability in the atmosphere and forecasting something which initiates the convection. And there are some, as I mentioned, there are some correlations between different storm types and their likelihood of making large hail. If, if you have a storm with a certain wind, kind of wind shear, it's, it's more likely to make hail than if there isn't wind shear. The risk of hail is greatest when dry, cold air masses push warm, moist air upwards. Powerful rising air drives the drops of water in the clouds to a height of up to 16 kilometers. In the icy cold of minus 40 degrees, the drops freeze on dust particles, which have been sucked up from the ground. An ice crystal takes shape. More drops of water collide with the ice crystal and freeze on it. A hailstone is formed. The size of the hailstone largely depends on two factors. Conditions for large hail are that the storm contains a supercooled water and that it has a strong updraft. So that if a if a piece of ice gets started in the updraft, it can be kept at the altitude where the supercooled water is long enough for the hailstone to, to grow large. Swiss scientists started firing silver iodide missiles into storm clouds as early as the 1970s in the battle to prevent hail. The silver iodide is designed to stop the ice crystals from developing into large hailstones. Scientists in South Africa use hydroscopic salts in an effort to turn threatening hail showers into harmless rain. They fly directly into the storm clouds in their small plane. It's a highly risky task because of the huge amount of turbulence. The substance is sprayed into the cloud at the push of a button. But all attempts at preventing hailstorms have been disappointing so far. The storms are occurring just as frequently as ever. Experiments carried out by the scientists in Boulder give good reason for new hope. They're using a new kind of radar system to study how thunderclouds with hail begin life. It's called the S-Polar Radar, and it allows them to get an X-ray view of the clouds. The radar has new techniques for identifying hail. They depend on polarization techniques. This tells you something about the shape of the particles, and, and we know that, that, that raindrops, for instance, are, are oblate. They're, they have, are bigger horizontally than they are vertically. So they have a certain polarization signature. Hailstones tend to tumble as they fall, and then that gives them a different kind of polarization signature. So, so radar can give you in, information like that. Amounts of rainfall and wind speeds can also be measured using the radar system. In conjunction with satellite images, the radar data allows the scientists to provide more accurate forecasts about the formation of thunderclouds and hailstorms than they've been able to do up until now. They can now even recognize storms 460 kilometers away. But the experts still have not unraveled all of the knots. One of the un unanswered questions in cloud physics is 
that there appears to be a mechanism by which ice crystals can multiply themselves. So, so that if, if, you, if you nucleate a few ice crystals, they collide with each other or do something so as to generate more ice crystals in the cloud. And this process is called ice multiplication. And it's not properly understood yet. This is, this is one of the big uh, misunderstood problems in cloud physics, one of the things that we would all like to solve. <laughs> Charles Knight will go on working on solving the mystery surrounding hail. Perhaps we will then be in a position to forecast hailstorms in time and even develop some effective weapons to counteract their destructive force.